All right, so this begins the second episode of our Liberatory Couch series, in which, uh, <laughs> yeah, he has a little, uh, wants to change the name to something else, but it's got a, it's a good camera, there's no setup, there's no, um, okay, you know. Can't do anything more clever. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where we were, and that's actually the name I came up with, so All right. please replace it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it works. Uh, so, okay, show man. by anarchists for anarchists, okay. especially local Richmond anarchists, and so with that, let's start off with, uh, with any, I guess, topic that we want to bring up. I guess the most recent would be Halloween, right? Huh. Uh, <laughs> how was there uh, Halloween? Well, yes, you said you got up around midnight. Yeah, I basically worked the whole time. All right. I mean, I got to dress up really scary. So. Where are you at again? The Krogas. The Krogas. The Krogas. Uh-huh. I guess that was uh, your first time at the Halloween parade, right? Yeah, what do you think of that? So I've never been to, like, I didn't know there was, like, a whole parade float thing that goes from the middle park and goes around like um it goes around this room i thought it was like super cool like it was i was it wasn't what i was expecting i was expecting like you know bcu students to be like yay and just go around a couple blocks and be like you know i don't know pathetic but it wasn't like, awesome mm-hmm. dude there was a lot of like well-made like floats and people yeah, yeah. How many people? <laughs> well, <laughs> so they made you work on an important holiday. Uh, well, they didn't make they didn't you do anything. anything. Well, well, they didn't close down there the rest of all, kind of like tying into this thing on, uh, on Thanksgiving or the day of appropriating as an anarcho capitalism did. Uh, there's this uh, tension whether or not you should remain open or you should close. Because I guess it should be family time for a lot of people. Do they um, encourage, um, condemn, or were indifferent to you dressing up while you were on duty? I don't know. They basically just like, yeah, you can. <laughs> it's like they didn't like. Really, yeah, you can. All right. <laughs> was that basically you with the spooky eyes and the sort of drippy um, eye makeup that was on Facebook? Oh yeah, I took a picture of that in the bathroom. Okay, so that was what you had at work. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think, uh, I guess, what are you guys' thoughts on uh, people working on that day, on the what, 26th, was it 4th, Thursday? Well, kind of a loaded question for me, is it? That's right. my bread and butter right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> I repurposed my Krampus outfit and wore horns and an evil Santa hat, day. which, yeah, I think was pretty darn appropriate. I think I should wear horns more often because it was the first Halloween where I had no, like, I had nobody say anything along the lines of, why are you guys so busy? Why is it taking so long to wait in line? None of that shit. Mm. So I think like the Christmas reminder and having horns coming out of my head was like the perfect combination of just, just give me a fucking break. The ABC store lines that were long. That was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I thought I had enough time to jump in there. It's like it's like long line this week. It's like oh yeah, duh. So I thought, See, that. that's when you need a black market salesman to right. stand behind <laughs> the store and yeah, there you go. Right. I was taking cash from people and having them grab items and leave without waiting in line. I guess that was my one little. And I, I entered into the register later, but right. there were three people that I did need. That's going to be about four seventy four. And they're like, here's five dollars. Can I just take it and run? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the best way. I would want an employee that would do that, that would take initiative and actually do that instead of just potentially losing customers and profits. Oh my god, we All had right. great seasonal people this year with the exception of one. Um, <laughs> and there was so much joy when that person left. But um, yeah, yeah, everybody was really fucking adaptable and working for minimum wage. They just got caught up in the great feel of it all. You know, it's. I think it's a great holiday because people feel a huge degree of self-expression, you know. Nice. And alcohol helps that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you guys think of uh, the Thanksgiving uh, issue, though? There's uh, some stores right now, are, I guess, closing on that day. Uh, so in terms of like this uh, big economic rush, you buy a lot of cheap items. A lot of them are, uh, uh, yeah, they're turning away from that. Uh, they say, well, it robs uh, them from being from the family. Oh, there's a lot of people. They don't have families, so they don't really care much for it. It's not maybe a, uh, something that they practice, I guess, culture-wise. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm in the same uh, area with that. I guess whatever your preferences are. I'm more upset, I guess, with uh, ABC having to be closed on Sundays. Um, and that kind of a uh, forced, uh, I guess, cultural preference. I think they do that in in Maryland for, like, I guess, religious reasons. Um, I remember it's very much a, you know, religious imposition. You know, I mean, the, the bedrock of it is, you know, it's it's Judeo-Christian based, or maybe it's Christian based. I don't know. Jews love alcohol. Okay, <laughs> alcohol or it's either Friday, Saturday, or something. It, it's, it's puritanical. It's puritanical. 
Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, before too. most synagogues are stocked I mean, pretty well. <laughs> like alcohol. What about other rigid. apocalyptic aspects? Should we play to yeah. a synagogue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, you just we discovered alcohol so that you can drink something without dying. Was essentially why they drink because you couldn't drink the water. Because you know they boil oh, the, the water. Beer. That's right. So like they boil the water to throw at enemies, but they didn't think, hey, maybe we can uh, do that to not die. Yeah, to totally Middle Ages, like. Beer, because it was uh, because one of the processes required you boiling it, it killed like all the bacteria and stuff. <laughs> exactly. in it. And people realize, oh crap! If when I when I drink beer instead of water all the time, I don't get I don't get so much dysentery. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you make it like pottage or hardtack or just a simple grain as well. So you're basically drinking the same thing you're eating, but it's also an antidepressant and an antiseptic. It's, it's some brilliant food stuff in that sort of condition. Also, like, and any if you go more ancient, like back like Egypt times, like like dawns of civilization, like there there's fossils of human remains with the bones have tetracycline, which is a modern day uh, anti antibiotic. It kills bacteria and it kills even some protozoans. And the we it's like why would oh, people way back in the past have a tetracycline in their bones? It means they were like having it in their system all the time. Turns out the beer they were drinking had tetracycline in it as part of the fermentation from one of the things that uh, devoured it. So people way back when had antibiotics or medicine from drinking beer. The more you know. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's why my spirit animal is the uh, Malaysian tree shrew. Like does you said, drink fermented nectar. Like nectar, nectar, nectar. Panties. Guess what I'm calling it. This is great. Uh, so let's talk about the next uh, scare uh, in terms of Halloween. Uh, Ebola. Anyone here scared of uh, Ebola? No. no. <laughs> I'm more afraid of my coworkers like coughing and stuff. All right. I'm more afraid of that uh, police like, siren that's out past the fire. Just <laughs> Just like the regular flu or just seasonal you know, sickness. Right. I can't, nobody got time to be sick. Right. If you ever get a clammy handshake around top, now it's like, you asshole. Mm -hmm. For me, <laughs> like, stay home. I, I'm gonna punch you in the face. That's a bad idea. You'll touch their face. <laughs> <laughs> and you might That's break that, so you might work. <laughs> and then you get AIDS through the blood. All right. So what would be the, uh, I guess, uh, to kind of prevent outbreaks, some people want to know like how these contagious uh, would be prevented, or how would they be assessed in a free market society? Um, and your, I think your uncle was uh, having your response to that earlier, you know, in terms of like, you know, I don't really invite sick people into my home, right? <laughs> oh, like, would it be <laughs> wrong or moral to like re reject somebody? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. sick. Um, yeah. All right. I mean, you should have like the wherewithal to not want to. Right. Yeah. Others, right? So, <laughs> All right. Uh, and at which point it's some um, self-defense, I guess. Right, yeah. Um, there are a lot of uh, microaggressions to do for on a daily basis. Uh, things of like uh, expiration of uh, oxygen onto other people or coughing onto other people or bumping uh, you know, crowded subways and such. Um, little microaggressions that uh, people just kind of let go. They don't really justify it as, a, I guess, a common form of aggression. Um, but I guess, yeah, illnesses in terms of like, uh, sometimes STDs might come into play with that, like someone knowingly has, uh, uh, I guess, a uh, venereal disease or a uh, life-threatening one like AIDS and purposely passing that on to it. Are you saying that's a microaggression? I would say that's, uh, that would be the opposite, that, that would be aggression, right? So I wouldn't say that it would be a micro one. Um, yeah. But like, uh, yeah. but the two yeah. do kind of dwell into <laughs> that area, um, knowingly. And in, uh, with intent to kind of spread that. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. You know, like, you know, to kind of go out there mm -hmm. out of your way. You could get an attempted murder charge on that. I mean, if you spit in someone's face, yeah. you could get charged biologically. Right. If you intentionally try to infect others, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is cool mouthpiece so you can get, you know, to do mouth to mouth. But apparently, you don't really need to do mouth to mouth for like, just do chest compressions. Um, yeah, I saw that movie <laughs> recently, and they were like, "Yeah, breathing in people's mouth—that does nothing." Yeah. <laughs> this whole time, ah, 
I guess it makes sense because like you're kind of it's like pushing like a plastic bag like or right. an inflated bag. I guess it would be like a pump, right? So yeah. you wouldn't need to actually yeah, the, like the through the process of pumping the lungs, right. and, yeah, and the whole chest cavity. Well, that's funny because what they always gave us was you know do the breathing first. We live near bodies of water, so it's always to expel the water. Uh. And then you like you have to you have to be certified to do the CPR stuff. So like oh you might you know break their solar plexus or sternum or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. happens a lot. I mean, yeah, the, this is this it. kind of <laughs> common. But I mean, that's uh, saving the person's life right. or uh, mm -hmm. preventing death. I had an instructor get angry at me once in the military because he was going over. He says, you have to do it. I had to do it once. I said, well, you know, yeah, if I have a protection device, you know, one of those mouth cars, absolutely, no problem. But uh, if that's not around me, I'm not going to take that risk. No, sorry, you know. And then um, peripherally for drowning later, you hear that slapping on the back while leaning over the surface is the best way to go. And you never thought it would change Right. Yeah, my dad saved my life. Uh, I was joking on a piece of steak during a camping trip, and he flipped me. Like he he tried doing the How the Heimlich, mean? and that wasn't working. So he just flipped me over and was just beating on my back and shaking me at the same time. And it came out <laughs> like it was lodged <laughs> deep. <Wow. laughs> I, I, I might not even be here, right? How so, old were you? Um, maybe ten. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's some strength. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then he turned me to a balloon animal. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, and then um, I guess people assume those risks that they want to go out there and save someone too. Um, but I guess it's not so much we'll have much of concern with an Ebola outbreak, you know, when everything's privatized. Um, and I so much that you wouldn't allow someone who has a looks like feverish into your home. Well, you it's know? been dealt with before in you know third world situations. I mean, if you want to take a page from Doctors Without Borders, stock up on some bleach, stock up on some face masks and some latex gloves, and you're fucking fine. You know, I mean. That's what they were dealing with in the field. That's what they had, mm -hmm. you know. And with the exception of, a, I watched the Frontline documentary way back then, you know, back in like this whole '90s scare when movies like Outbreak and whatnot and Twelve Monkeys, you know, we've had the pandemic <coughs> scare before. I guess we're just doing the cycle, you know, for it to come back. Yeah. It can be handled in a fucking backwoods, minimalist, <coughs> third world situation. It can be contained. It can be treated. You just need some fucking tents and. And we're also kind of spoiled because, you know, we've, we've entered the modern era and, you know, back in the Victorian times. Oh, dysentery. You might just get that. You might just shit yourself. <coughs> but in the meantime, we're going to have tea and get all of our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of it, a lot of it can hang on education and knowledge of, like, what to do. Like, most, not everybody's going to be a biologist or know, or, or know what date, what ought to be done, especially, like, in the developing or, or undeveloped nation. Um, but here, we, here we have Google. Like we have, we can ask Google. Oh my gosh, what does this do? What should I not do? What should, what, I, what can I do? Um, but it's education. A lot of it is knowing. Well, you know, what ought be, what ought one do, what ought not one do. And then after that, it's having the actual necessary supplies. So, in an ANCAP community, it would very much be community focused. Like a community would have a, hey, we don't want this kind of thing to happen. So these are the steps we take to like prevent that. Like first, the first step is always preventative. Like, don't go out to places uh, that are gonna be, like uh, that's gonna have a whole bunch of diseases without any kind of like protection. Like, don't go into a biohazardous place without wearing a biohazard suit. You know, that seems like common sense, but you might have to tell somebody that. Like, yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't go to that village that's got that really contagious disease and shake people's hands. That's not a good idea. So least, you're just talking about educating people to minimize risk. Yeah, that's the first step. The steps after that is, you know, being prepared, having some kind of preparation. But that'll be like, you know, at least I would imagine a community like getting together and like figuring that out. I mean, you kind of have a problem where, at least like in this culture, there's this idea that work is a good thing for its own sake, basically, which comes from the Puritans, basically. And so that kind of leads to people when they're sick, they're being like, oh, I got to go to work because, you know, I'm a bad person if I don't work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you don't have that because people decide they're not going to be fucking stupid, then people will stay home when they're sick. Like a martyr complex thing or like a... I mean... 
I know plenty, I work in a job that has no health coverage whatsoever, but I would sooner take a day off than come in extraordinarily sick and then be out for three days instead. I mean, that's also common education as well to you, to know and not have it horribly condoned that if you stay home and you initially feel sick and try and recuperate, it's much better than to go out, spread it, and then stay home for oh, a yeah. double the time. There's like, there's, it's one of the two cultural artifacts from Puritanism, which is basically that sex is a bad thing, and work is a good thing for its own sake, and those kind of have negative effects still in at least American society. And you can't trust public schools to teach people how to handle a bullet either, because oh, yeah. what fuck all I learned about sexually transmitted diseases didn't do me any good in the long run. Yeah, Here are some slides that. of warts. That is why sex should be scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joy, but, Joy. but see, this is something a security force would take very seriously in an anarcho-capitalist society. Oh, yeah. It'd be like, we're getting biohazard suits ready. We're going to go contact the people we think are infested. And that's the way the CDC should have done it. So what's up with that, right? Yeah, I mean, then there's, uh, there's no patents. <laughs> so there's a lot of abundance of research and development going on. Uh, there's no taxes, so a lot of uh, wealth uh, that could go towards reinvestment for cures, you know, um, instead of just focusing on prevention. Um, so yeah, there, there appears a large venue uh, for cures and um, errors to kind of prevent this sort of stuff very fast. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of funny, so that's the, the scare thing. Do you guys remember any other ones? There was the white 2K, there was a uh, mad cow, um, anthrax. Yeah, swine flu. And then before that, before that one, it was avian flu. Avian flu, right? So there's always a bunch of pandemics that seem like they could be scary because epidemiologists forecast that hey, this is something that's going to come about soon and it could have a potentially bad strain. And in another country, is China. They actually lost. They actually lost a lot of people to avian flu because that one was uh, that that one was highly contagious and it had very very adverse like and very adverse systems that stray pretty quickly. But that was and th that was their failure to deal with it. What do you think of uh, then other areas of uh, diseases as those are like mental illnesses, mental diseases like uh, ADD or ADHD? Um, there's some, yeah, this is sleep, uh, but I guess that's like they said that there's something that's been spreading that's common among children. Um, because of vaccinations, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, because but, we can now overlook dying of whooping cough at age well, 30. Right. Nowadays, like, and that's actually, so that's, so the diagnosis of me like mental diseases or mental um, stuff like that or psychological things, so we're, we're able to detect that better or we have, we're more aware of it nowadays. It, actually, it might be the case that it was a thing that is a normal thing, but we never knew it was a thing before. Like an example would be cancer. We hear so many reports of so many more people dying of cancer, getting cancer, having cancer, but also we're having people live longer nowadays. Um, also, secondly, before, a lot of diseases when people would die of something, we were like, oh, they die of natural causes. Really, we didn't know, we didn't categorize that they actually died of cancer. So you're That's saying enough. that Ebola it is a, no, always existed? I'm, no, I'm talking, not about, I'm talking about just... like ADD okay. and like uh, disorders like that were that might be a thing that is resurging now, either because but, uh, nobody yeah, but or I'm, because something is causing it. Right, but I'm saying like things that are like government backed uh, opinions on things that are contagious or uh, spreading. Um, so a lot of these are government backed fears. Um, I remember Y2K being a huge one, and that was kind of key. Are you saying that ADD is a government backed fear then? Yes. Uh, so they like uh, they subsidize very heavily a lot of the. Um, they make it, yeah, pharmaceutical companies, and so pharmaceutical companies have a, a relationship with schools. The more children they oh, have. Oh, I thought you were saying that it was contagious. Oh no 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 <laughs> no! They, they're not, not so much contagious, not contagious, but spreading. So there happens to be a lot of children who have problems. It like seems that. to be very easy to prescribe to children. Well, right. I mean, something course, interesting. Like calling autism an epidemic. Now. Right. Yeah. I mean, something interesting is it could just be uh, an effect of. A while ago, we used to use lead in paint, and so the kids for many they're being years. the kid yes for many years. And uh, an interesting offshoot that I could talk about forever is uh, they think that might have had an effect on the Roman Empire. Yeah, yeah, they totally talk about the. Roman they're like, hey, they made lead. Caligula, but but anyway, oh. but but that could just be the after effect of 
all these people that were born from people who were heavily exposed to lead. And so you just have this sort of after effect after you got rid of it. There's still that sort of... Or how about people's diets? More and more preservatives and all these chemicals going into their diet that were not there 15 right. yeah. years ago. You know, all these fake hormones, you know, and suddenly cancer rates are up. Well, that makes perfect sense. Allergies you know, are up. Right. Uh -huh. Actually, there is, there is data out there, a study that recently that for in, mo in our times, in modern times, we actually have the largest uh, boob sizes ever. <laughs> So that's, Not that's, me. that's definitely, <laughs> and that could be, we could. We also have like the fattest people. Who's yeah, recording here? here. Who's here? Who's here? We also have the fattest people. Now that men have the fattest people. Now it's like. like it's important data. So like that's not a thing that was before, and that could definitely be a. Are they also to playing like boobs in people's backs as well? <laughs> I don't know. Back boobs. People of Walmart dot com, the unofficial documentator of the Muppet and Duck. Yeah. <laughs> it could definitely be attributed to hormones we give yeah. to like our meat. Uh, Speaking of uh, hormones and other fears, uh, you guys watch the. Uh, Trying to interconnect all these. Um, <laughs> you're doing good, you're right doing good. Keep going. Uh, how about uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. fear of uh, whether it's a compliment or harassment in uh, New York City? You guys ever uh, you guys watched uh, that uh, video okay, so of the girl who's walking through feminism now? Feminism, no, 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 um, the idea of like microaggressions and aggressions, right? Yeah, in yeah. In everyday situations, this would be, and I would imagine New York City is such a huge hub of a lot of different cultural norms. They're going to have a lot of different uh, ways of interaction from there. Um, okay, how does everybody feel about panhandling? I mean, you want to be paid to beg for money, go for it. Well, I mean, I mean, these people are panhandling for sexual attention, and some of them are very benign and very complimentary, and some are aggressive and get up and walk after oh. you. And you know, what is it? Is it because you know I smell bad? Is it because I'm black? You know, why won't you give me money? Why won't you give me sex? You know, sometimes it takes that direction. And I think that's what bothers me. I didn't even think of it that way. What about yeah. this guy yeah. to the food court? That was, so I was only one incident in that video. Then. Yeah. Free samples. That's <laughs> incidents that have happened to me in this city, and I'm a homely motherfucker. So I've um, never seen that. Well, last night, I actually, I actually have a street harassment story. Um, I was driving past the Bird Theater and. Uh, I got the beat, so I went and picked up this, these two girls that are dressed like zombies. But there's this big black dude walking around in a black mask. I'm just like, whoa, that dude looks aggressive as fuck. And like, he kept his hand in his pockets when I picked them up, and I turned the next right, just got the fuck out of there. But I was like, dude, I was sketched out on that guy for real. Like, he was following them the whole way, and like, he was yelling, he was like, fuck you too, bro. And I was like, I got out of the car, I was like, what's up with this black guy? Like, for real. And then, as soon as I checked him, we got out of there. It was sketchy, so fuck street. Like the middle of the night or something? Or this was last night, like, yeah, too. I think I've been harassed more by women. Yeah, uh, and that seems to be the case with a lot of my female friends, too. On the street. Uh, mom. <laughs> Number one was mom. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, Alright, yeah, so if we're going to talk about stopping harassment, let's stop uh, the cause. Look I mean, at the cause of like, were... verbally, you know. People, you know, not just physically abusing kids, but like emotionally and mentally. Oh yeah, I mean, and that's not. where it's learned, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right, and the way women like learn passive on aggression strangers. more so, and men are like more like, you know, they externalize or more confrontational. Right. So I think I've yeah definitely experienced a lot more like harassment and behind the back like passive aggression from females. Oh yeah, there's catty talk, but that's among people who know each other, and I mean that's mm -hmm. that's something can be looked on like well like. Like, states make you create enemies, gender roles regarding gender make you create enemies, too. Women are very much taught to compare themselves to each other on a sliding scale, and... Yeah, yeah, there, there is a lot of intrinsic cattiness, but it's condoned when people know each other. And when women encounter... What you mean is that it's making... people are excusing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, see, but now, but like, guys oh, I know her, I know what she did. Like, you know, oh, we can't. You can't excuse that. And right, yeah. And I guess yeah. women do it. And I guess <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. I guess it introduces, like, the... I guess it introduces social context. Like, wherever you've grown around, the friends you have around, like, that's the context you have with them. And in some cultures, it's different. Like, here, it's definitely different than it would be, like, in Asia. Well, yeah, I was actually talking about that with Cal. Like, you hear that on subways in Japan. Um, there's a lot of groping. There's a lot of upskirt photography. Um, Nonverbal stuff, because verbal is impolite. And, you know, 
huh. bodily proximity, you know, is still more readily observed. You know, like you know, there's a formulated way you talk to people. There's a formulated, you know, way businessmen sit in an arrangement. You know, there are formulas, but even within those formulas, there's people who don't respect bodily ownership. You know, there's mm -hmm. people who who are panhandling for sexual attention, and in some cases will um, mug somebody for sexual attention. You know. Well, could you not argue that women? Know. You could argue that what they wear, somebody's demanding sexual attention a lot more than. Well, everyone's communicating else. something. Not to say like. A, and it's 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 the standard that society tells them they need to live up to. They need to exude sexual, you know, attractiveness. Mm -hmm. So I feel like women walk around, you know, not directly but indirectly asking for sexual attention a hell of a lot more than guys. Oh, I thought we were talking about the men in the video oh. and like for sex. Sorry, <laughs> I was such a, So like, they're like, "Hey, baby, like, like." Cause I was thinking of the, the. And that's why there are nice panhandlers. They're okay. You don't have any money. That's fine. You have a good day. Oh, you look beautiful. Okay, have a good day. But um, you've got you've got women who you know wear something semi-suggestive but also professional. It's like, okay, she's got a sexual form. Perhaps I can approach her if I'm rebuffed. Cool. You've got prostitutes, and they're wearing you know string thongs, triangle bikinis out in sixty degree weather. You can be fairly certain you pull that car up to that woman after a small degree of negotiations, you will get a hand job. You know, transaction served. Good fucking love. You know, um, social cues are very pertinent. Some people think, though, that it's there for the asking, and that if they are aggressive, they will get what they want and they need to be obeyed. And that is learned in childhood. Yeah. Uh, and that's where we can kind of go into, like, if people want to try to solve the effects, let's look at the cause, and the cause would be the. Uh, I guess they'll maintain relationships that I guess the parent-child relationship uh, that goes See, if there's no respect for the child. The same no... thing that Rachel's saying, you just need to change it a little bit and then women have their own way of like manipulating men emotionally to get what they want. So in the same way, women have something very similar. So it's a mind fuck. The difference. Yeah. <laughs> right, they're very manipulative, like, you know, pretending they're the victim and crying and like, you know. So you God sometimes. bless you could get you arrested in the future. <laughs> about that, but if yeah. you try to yeah. point that out about the female, would that be, be then the blaming the victim? Right, so, right. So, so, see, that's the thing. It's like okay to talk. It's not okay to talk about one, but it's like you know. Okay so so you finish up title nine. You have to. You have to talk one with slides or your what? favorite. Right, but oh. one usually goes kind of more. You know. You did. Yeah. Right. Well, sure, a restaurant right can advertise a big juicy cheeseburger. It doesn't mean you get the cheeseburger for free just yeah. because you saw the picture. Right. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, and I. Like of course, in a free market society, you have a lot of these communities with the serious social norms you find acceptable in terms of those preferences. You can have one that's ultra sexualized. You can have one that's like the Amish community, in which I don't think they kind of go around sexualizing one another uh, in their encounters. So. Kidding me? Watch your turn, that butter man. Right. Maybe <laughs> 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 they have different ways to, so to express that, right? Yeah, must uh, <laughs> Whatever it is, but you'll have a lot that comes to the acceptance of those cues that you're accustomed to as well. Um, and that's a way to kind of limit that being uh, surrounded by like-minded people. Um, so you can have uh, the inverse, very puritanical, I guess, so to speak, even though that might be, uh, it wasn't really the case. Um, there's a lot of myths about the Puritans. Like, they didn't really dress the way they, you know, they're kind of like prescribed, you know, black uh, shirts, you know, white cuffs, the hat. Um, that's actually a huge um, misnomer. That was the Dutch. They were immigrating from initially. Oh my God! Yeah. And there's somebody did painting. The pilgrim are from the 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 Dutch paintings of these societies yeah. before they set sail. So never really looked like that. You watch the Crucible, the kind of shitty one with Winona Ryder in it. That's kind of what Puritan societies had as their prescribed dress code, and it was very it was very it's colonialist. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people talk about how you know this was something very you know set in. The Americas during the reign of Cromwell, they had the same thing going on. You know, they had no king then; they had dissolved into a proto democracy. Yeah. Britain was not a monarchy briefly, but it was incredibly sexually repressed and puritanical, and that's ultimately why it failed. They they left out the well, they left out the bread and circuses. There wasn't enough lead in their wine or something, you know. What I mean? so, but yeah, um, it's something that society can fall prey to. It's very Maoist. It's very communist. But it's a way people degrade to, and I think that if we, if we allow slut shaming, um, or if we, you know, do victim blaming, that's what we're going to regress to. It'll be a very Sheree loss situation where you know we can't trust people not to be animals, so we have to keep ourselves, our bodies, in cages, cages of dress, cages of social behavior, cages of you know, keep your wife inside uh, the house. You so know? that's the extreme opposite. I see what you're saying. 
Yes, if we don't address street harassment as a possible form of aggression for both genders, we're setting ourselves up that we everything has to be by ordinance, everything has to be yeah. by law. All right, and then uh, again, this is, uh, we didn't cut it off, not just at parenting, but not placing uh, these people in these uh, public school camps, indoctrination camps. Right, the only problem is when you, like, don't talk about where it comes from and when you choose to deal with the situation, like, uh, like it's entirely subjective when someone says, like, I've been harassed, like, it's entirely subjective because some people, the same situation would happen, like, I, I don't feel like I was just harassing someone else in the exact same situation, I feel like I am. So how do you define, where do you, like, set the boundaries, like, you, like, you really can't. So with and political then, correctness, stuff, you can stifle free speech. I mean, well, if you turn and like yeah. examine where it all comes from, then perhaps we can. It's cultural Marxism. It all comes from Tumblr. I think. Yeah, it does. Tumblr is The source. I guess to say, hey, <laughs> these are my boundaries. Like, one person may not want to talk to people out in public, and that's their boundary. If someone attempts to talk to them, is like, hey, I'm busy. I don't want to talk to you right now. And that woman hadn't been taught socially to turn to that guy and say no. She just kept walking. Right. We're taught. Like, we we can't I think she was, not, she was told not to talk to anyone. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. girls are... They, like being girls being are assertive is something I find uh, lacking with a lot of people regardless. And I think... Uh, of course, if everyone was very assertive for how they feel um, and their traditions, we wouldn't really be where we are today. This being uh, seems like a more submissive uh, society towards, uh, I guess, our own enslavement here, uh, tax forms. Um, it's hard for people to say, you know, in regards to, uh, I guess, no political rulers, no taxation all the way, or instead of no police, uh, police accountability. They still want police. They still want these things. And sometimes it's, uh, I guess, to assert their own uh, opinions. It seems to be a little skewed. Oh, if I may say, look, the thing that pisses me off the most about the video is that, like, I see, I see guys like this on the street, and like they really piss me off. Oh my god, yes. Like I see like trash, <laughs> like guys on the back of a trash truck. They're like, "Hey, baby, like, do you really think that the female is going to respond to that kind of like catcalling, like from a dude on?" Right. A, and oh my god, I'm just. Sure. I have a story. And, <laughs> so, so, it, uh, you all know that new apartment complex building or whatever that they're building across from the art place. Yeah, the construction workers. Yeah, yeah. there were some They're construction horrible. workers horrible. eating there, and I was I was pretty gossed out at that day, and I got harassed by them. Okay. Oh, wow. So, so you see you from your back with your pretty hair? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I didn't listen to them. I was just like, they're just being assholes. Fuck them. All right. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's public school for me. Uh, it's like a Lord of the Fly uh, environment. Okay. Uh, and a lot of bullying. A lot of uh, name calling, a lot of passive aggressive behavior. Uh, you know, so, and what was going on in that video was not like passive aggressive. Some people were literally saying, "Hi, have a nice day." Right, yeah, yeah. And, like, yeah. In a very friendly, like not sort of creepy, like, "Hey, nice boobs, have a nice day." <laughs> you know, like, like, have a nice day, like. Right. Like it was not even creepy. Like not even one percent creepy. Yeah. And I'm like, if Except someone, that one if someone were to be like, like "You're happens. harassing me," like at what point does that person that's like being accused of harassment be like, "Whoa, I am like, I feel like I'm a victim now," like. Yeah, I've seen videos of subway activity that are far more intense, like fights that start on public transportation, you know, right. fights that start in, like, more congested situations. And, you know, male on female, female on male, um, you know, cisgender male on transgender female, you know, I mean, there's, there are much more graphic examples of strangers feeling they have the right to exert their opinion and bodily control over somebody else. Yeah. So would the source of conflict be the fact that these people can't disassociate from each other, like, at, like all yeah, these I people say, yeah. are forced to live in New York City, <laughs> right? Because right? right. that's where the jobs are. Because that's where the little tax farm is. Where all you know, everything's subsidized. That's where all the businesses. So you have these again tying it, I guess, into urban planning. For me, I see people forced to live in these like imaginary borders, and this is the conflict that arises. Mm -hmm. From it, yeah, because you're gonna have the the construction workers. You're gonna have those people. But everything, like but that. like. I, I don't like the city. I want to be able to go to the next one, but I can't. All right. I guess uh, it's like back to Ebola. Uh, as long as uh, the notion of public property exists, we're all at risk of that kind of unwanted behavior or uh, contagions. Well, I mean, and this is something that makes you irrelevant. Uh, there's Town in particular? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, makes you, it would make you irrelevant is there, I think there are two cities in... Texas with no zoning 
or urban planning at all. Yeah, Houston. And they, yeah. yes, Houston. Houston. And they work perfectly fine. And they um, have no, but you would have thousands 10, of bands. communities like yeah, that, right? Yeah, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. have the tax farm anymore, where uh, where people's preferences say build here because I like it here. Right. You, you have malls that have a uh, saggy pants here, another one that says none. Uh, <laughs> saggy perfectly pants. Perfectly okay. Small. Right. Yeah. <laughs> great pants here. Right. Yeah. Like, so you have to have a. Uh, all the way up to here, All right? Man pants. Yeah, they'll have your four chance city somewhere <laughs> out there on the west coast. <laughs> they'll, they'll sell you suspenders just so you can get in. Now people will have signs <laughs> that say, "Don't go to four chance city." <laughs> uh, don't go to Tumblr city either. Right. <laughs> what's, what's this eight chan I heard about? It? What? What's it's, eight chan? It's different options for it. Don't it's go like there. Two chan. I won't go there either. See that dark place um, over there. So, uh, jumping off from that. Um, Perfect timing. Right. <laughs> Let's set this up. What do you guys think of uh, what to do on November fourth? For uh, I want to go to that Bitcoin bar you spoke of. Bitcoin bar? Okay. Yeah. I think oh. that'd be a lot of fun. Go to the uh, Triple Crossing. Oh. Uh, meet there uh, in the evening. Celebrate. Yeah. I want to do. Uh, I want a table um, at some of these uh, voting booths, murder booths. Because um, you mentioned like what's a good way to market. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we, we've actually yeah, uh, set great. up outside of a place. We um, could. Yeah, I think like there's, I, I don't know if it's like some, there's some specific measurement. It's 200 of feet. It's 200, 200 feet. feet. And, and you see it, and you see it like, it's, it's like heavy advertisement yeah. all the way up to that 20 yeah. feet and it's dead. Darn. All right, it's so that, let's, let's do that. I think that'd be a lot better than, uh, that defeats the purpose that's really. Campaigns at campaigns 20 feet, want. so like, if nice. you want to make something. Yeah, yeah let's, let's or make somebody has a button maker, we a snarky little anarchist button. Let's make our signs. Uh, I like to make buttons. That'd be fun. That's very easy, very uh, cheap. Um, we're here to convince you not days. to let today. Right? Oh, no, no, I mean, this is something that's going to take that long. I mean, like you were mentioning earlier, like yes. an alternative maybe going inside the booth and writing, I don't yes. consent. But for me, with that is, um, uh, oh, like, it's not like they, they would really care or make any mention that anyone did this. I mean, it's really um, kind of meant for the people reading them. It is nice that you made it about well, the individual. I mean, it's, it's about different. them, and they're like, oh, there are people that think this way. For Maybe me, I should look I think into that. I think it's beneficial, like, we're enlightening it to people to, to saying, hey, what you're doing is morally wrong. Do you want to be, do you, as a person who probably is a good person, or who thinks of yourself as a good person, do you want to do something that's morally wrong against someone else? Well, oh, yes. They probably don't want to. Well, it's, it's, a, it's sort of like how there are some activists that will really hassle the TSA, and like, do you, like, tell them exactly what they're doing to them? Because the idea is to make them feel bad about doing what they're doing, essentially. Mm -hmm. And some of them, some of them are just like, you know, you're just a, some punk, but other people are like, that really affects them, so. Right. You don't want to make someone feel bad. Don't you don't want to make anything. someone who's yeah. pointing a gun at you feel bad for pointing a gun at you. I don't want to, like, I want to be away from those people as far as possible. Well, so my, the idea yes, of me going forced to, there, I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I guess if we're going to do, I mean, this is just like a one-time fun thing to do. Uh, and, in terms of against voting, uh, I would say if we were going to like invest that kind of resources and time, I, I think it would be better invested on first uh, getting everyone who's not part of the TSA or who's not a cop. Um, we're more likely to change those minds than we are, uh, I guess, efficiently spreading anarchy. Let's say. Can Unless we do a like thing to encourage people to do. I know this, like Sarah said, it's very little time left, but. Can we find a thing for people to photograph themselves doing that's kind of the ice buck challenge? Like, Ooh, yeah, yeah, way to cast yeah. a vote, like pay for something that means something to you, or do something that means something to you, or engage in an activity that is what the fuck is quintessentially you know an anarcho capitalist? I think it's right. buy some fucking. Big, I, don't know. <laughs> I think it's a bit pointless to actually go to the booth, and, and I mean, I could be wrong. Um, but I, I think, don't like the idea of getting them going. I mean, the people that are going to the voting booth are already just like their mind is set, right? right. Like, they're so enamored in it. And but I thought what that one picture that we had what last fall, where we're in front of the voter registration tables, <laughs> yes. uh, that's where I think you'd be more effective. And it was it was just it was a million dollar I mean, photo. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I was voting in moral right next to like vote registration. Just right. Like, yes. So no, was, no, it was, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. I think. Uh, um, let's, um, I'll, I'll have the whole day off uh, to do that, so you guys can uh, join me at various times in you know, class and work. Um, and it usually goes on to like 6 or 7, so we can meet up uh, 
I'll buy you guys a flight of beer using Bitcoin at a triple crossing afterwards. And another reason I think that's smarter because you're probably less likely to be approached by an armed thug. Very right, well. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, if you speak legally, I guess what they're looking for is that you're not uh, provoking attacks or not uh, yelling at them. They usually just kind of leave you alone uh, in that regard, except for that weird VCU guy, <laughs> cop guy. But, uh, maybe he was new. Right? Yeah, maybe, maybe he lost his bet. Yeah. He wanted to be uh, the cool guy that should send the anarchist. Right? <laughs> he just claimed the thing. <laughs> that was so funny. You were just, just claiming the shame. Right? <laughs> Yeah, of all the days, that that was the day I was set up next to that. Uh, oh, to that, that table. was the same day. Yeah, same day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I mean, if you're already getting approached by cops to, on, on just on not even voting day, right? Imagine how it would be. Yeah, yeah, at yeah, the, yeah. Well, it was on voting day. Yeah, yeah, nice. Oh yeah, So we could do that, but that was not a booth. My my problem with the going actually into that booth and doing that uh, it seems to encourage other people to vote. Because they don't know what your intentions are, they just see uh, continuously people going that would encourage yeah, that kind cool. of a uh, yeah. <laughs> like if I, uh, uh, I guess in like in terms of like people who reject uh, religion, you know, uh, doing that in a confession booth, I would say it doesn't seem to be the most uh, efficient way to go about that. Um, religion is self-expression in a secret ballot. Yeah, uh, the only place I find that to be. Uh, perhaps analyzing other tax forms would be like Australia. In Australia, you're forced to. You have to vote. If you don't, you know, you know, you have a fine. You're fine. You pay that fine. They throw into a cage. They will fly out helicopters. People who live like out there in the wastelands uh, with the ballot for them. Yeah. It's, it, it, it is a real hunger game there. <laughs> they are forced to participate. Hunger game. <laughs> yeah, but but then they do have an option to say no of the above. Uh, Right. <laughs> you know if they go after the Aboriginal people? I know, right? Yeah, I, I would imagine I mean, they, they I would. I think they've gone after them enough already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that chops the abolition. It was continuous. Right. I have a lot of science. This will be a fun, fun cool thing to do. Um, or cool, I'll, I'll post more info about that later in the group. I'll yeah, later yeah. after I wrote that article, um, I have so many people contacting me about like buff voting. <laughs> Uh, nice. So the the funniest thing I've ever heard anyone say about voting was that it's a suggestion box for slaves. Right. <laughs> yeah. Something I like to do, and this is kind of this kind of appeals to the status that want to vote. What I'll do is I'll ask them some government question, and then they won't be able to answer. I'll be like, "Don't vote." <laughs> so if you have no idea what you're talking about. You shouldn't have an opinion. <laughs> it's like no. But these are such weighty economic issues that could affect all our lives. <laughs> like, do you know anything about economics? Well, not really. Don't vote. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone was asking what are the economics of uh, voting and not voting. I said, well, you know, I save a lot of time. I save gas money. I save a couple of hours. Uh, time preference. Um, better doing something else. I guess more efficiently doing the anti-voting campaign. Uh, that seems to be that sounds like a lot of fun, man. All right? Yeah, man. So it's like, are you going to vote? Yeah. All right. And yeah, then, uh, then doesn't that require the person to have knowledge? That like, like so you're saying like it's okay. Knowledge not to do something. Some smart people can vote, but like you it, know, nobody should be able to it vote. It requires a, it requires a certain kind of person to realize I don't know I don't know something, so I'm not going to do something about that because I literally don't know how it's going to affect. I mean, the key is you have to convince them. I don't think, them. And, I don't think and a lot of them know that they don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you have to teach them that they don't know. It's like, it's, they know. But, yeah. but they know that you don't know. But essentially, what you, would, what you would do is there's not really only smart people can vote because no matter who you talk to, you will find that thing that government does that they don't know about and be like, don't vote. You're not like, smart. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, right. No church Because yeah. yeah. you essentially have to know everything yeah. about everything to be okay. the best government person. Right. But nobody knows the everything. The funny thing about is uh, the big fuck you guys to the tax slaves, taxers from Jefferson creating the Electoral College. So you guys are too dumb <laughs> to figure out who you're <laughs> <Man. laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. like I mean technically he was right. It's like no, no, I mean, not, I, mean uh, I think that's, people are too dumb to Right, and people didn't even realize that. So not just that they're preoccupied with staying alive and they don't have time to be involved in your superstructure of right. self perpetuating salaries. I right. mean, it's essentially yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> talk about gerrymandering. Like, seriously. Like it's like all crookedy and just like <laughs> Like, no, it's not rigged. Come on, no. Of course, not. come on. Yeah. It's like, oh, these new people moved in. Let's just 
cut them out of the little. They're here in a different service. You know, you're in a right. different group now. You have to vote here now. So, you guys, uh, anyone have any topics? Anything they want to bring up with uh, anything cool they've seen this week? You guys know about the stories and uh, origin of the uh, daylight savings? Oh. Farming? Farming. Farming. Well, 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 yeah, well, uh, I mean, technically they say because uh, the, the Earth's rotation and the there's like a space time and an Earth time. Oh, and it was the so Romans, much. right? Okay. Uh, I guess the Romans rewrote the months. Yeah, right. savings time I thought was like rooms. Yeah, it's actually it's not that long ago. Really um, so yeah, farmers hate it because they have to be up regardless <laughs> of what time it is and when exactly. the sun comes up. Uh, so for them, it kind of sets them back. Uh, for big industries. It hurts them as well because they have um, have a lot of things, I guess, in regards to computation, computers. Um, I don't think they were thinking about that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so easy. Right. I think uh, one of the heavy. So, like uh, all around the world, not everyone actually does it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. But they bounce back and forth. Yeah, it's crazy. So not not, every, not everyone does it. There's like in England, they it's kind of really go back and forth. Like maybe you just set an hour back and just leave it like that for the rest of the year. Don't set it forward. Um, so they find like an increasing cause of uh, car accidents and a lot oh, yeah. of stuff, uh, high uh, heart rate failure because of that. I mean, uh, most uh, countries oh, don't do it anymore. Right? Yeah, here in the United States, they still do it. And one of the like we we're the um, we're only one of three countries that use the imperial measurement system. Right? Is it a coincidence <laughs> that it's near uh, Halloween though that it's done? It's not. Actually, there's a. I remember coming across an article quite some Free time ago. <laughs> we want more Halloween. Um, uh, I guess candy businesses lobbying the government to get this passed through, so that way there's an extra hour for people to buy more candies. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> right. So, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Different ways where they screw people's lives up. And uh, well, technically, if it had happened after, that would give kids an extra hour of trick or treating. Which would mean people have to buy more candy to hand out candy longer. Right. Uh, well, yeah, so it benefits it them. It, it doesn't benefit the people yeah. who uh, lose that extra hour of sleep that they need uh, to go to work in the morning. So that's why there's a high rate of car accidents, school bus crashes, because uh, they you lose about. In the spring, though. Yeah, 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 spring, yeah, yeah. They lose about 45 minutes of sleep, so it hurts them. In the spring, not in the fall. Yeah, I believe spring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, it's just a connection with uh, what just happened this, this weekend. Um, so that's interesting. Different ways that the government goes out to hurt people. Uh, but but do you, do you think it wouldn't have been a problem if the government didn't do it? I don't think so. I think like, case in point, I'm sorry. No, please, please, please. Um, was the VCU riots? They cleared out the entire uh, Monroe Park by 10 o'clock that night. Why did you do that? All those people still lost the game, even if they were pissed off. What did you think they were going to do? If they would have let it go to like 11 or midnight. I think all those people just would have left and been like, okay, we got drunk. But what they tried to do is they tried to kettle them. And then once someone broke the kettle, it was all hell loose. And it actually makes it yeah, right you worse. Can't, you can't cage animals and expect them to... It's like, if you tell everyone cool they're about to be in a mass arrest, everyone you just said that to is going to go, like, you're not arresting me. You're, I don't care. Like, and then that's mob mentality. Um, and do you think it's because the government tries doing that in the first place? Or is it just because there's enough people around here, we have enough anonymity to just fuck shit up? Some of the VC right? It wasn't really much of a riot. It really wasn't. No, it was, so, it was, it was just set a uh, car on fire. I think so, a yeah. I guess so. It was a little meany. Um, and that's what, windows. Right? Did you hear about the Keen riot? But you know uh, what? A little bit about that. More window yeah. sales. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so, if you lived in a college town and there was like hundreds of like drunk white kids around you and they started throwing bottles at each other, like hard glass bottles at each other, do you think the cops should go in there and like shut down the entire block? I mean, this, this was a like, yes. That was that was actually the pumpkin festival. Yeah. <laughs> Why? People, people were just throwing glass bottles and they're like, dude, let's start flipping cars. <laughs> it's so uh, I don't advocate any police action. It's uh, so stupid. I mean, just yeah. don't. Well, that's how the new camera is started, didn't it? It was like some kid, just some teenagers being bad, and like every the year, UK when the VCU right. students move out, couches are set on fire. That's why that area is called the Couch Burn District. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. What about Hell's We should go down there since yeah. we're out yeah. now next spring. Right. Well, I know the people who clean Hellbach. Actually, they're awesome people. Oh yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. The whole Grove Stewart that triangulated area where you can rent hell where you can rent 
apartments, even if you don't have a cosigner that makes above the usual amount. And where the where do we basically make the student get it? Yeah. Uh, I think rents are, I guess, Alice of uh, displeasure, and I guess a lot of different areas of, uh, I guess, not just I would say like in their lives or like in activities. I, I don't know. I find sports to be kind of boring. Just to watch, I'd rather be involved in the sport or in an activity, and just sitting here and just just minus watching. I guess in that regards, going back and forth. I mean, I, I don't mind entertainment stuff. I guess if that's entertainment value, but to kind of go out there and go all, um, berserk and ballistic and throw a temper tantrum because uh, this you know this team lost. <laughs> I um, happen to go to this school, therefore. Right? Yeah. That's that's, and shit. Well, it's what the state does. You know, we've created an enemy. You know. Yeah. Uh, people do that too. Uh, I, I saw a video of somebody going throwing a temper tantrum because I guess the Redskins lost or something like that. Just oh, throwing yeah. his shit around. It's all over this town. Just knocking over an aquarium. And I've seen people do this with video games. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Losing or something like that. It's throwing their controllers. Uh, right. It's uh, right? psychological regression. Yeah. But, 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 yeah. but yeah. no, see, like, the, the gamers have like, a, a more creative way to deal with it. They go on World of Warcraft and they throw their fit on World right. of Warcraft. <laughs> well, that's that's yeah. that in real life. <laughs> But then you hear <laughs> this is true. But then, uh, like that one video where like the parents canceled the account or made it appear like they canceled the account. Oh, like, like, the well, it might have nothing to do with with actually the game. Well, that's them throwing a temper tantrum from having access to that entertainment. But it might have to do with like Slim's parents taking control well, yeah, yeah, of them true. and less yeah. of like the actual video game. Yeah, I've been there, my little brother. I was like, you that's cool happening. <laughs> that's <laughs> happening. Oh, she's too fat. Lady. Yeah. Trying to find her Uh So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think you do find that stuff uh, in an AMCAP society. Like, what, what do I, what do I think about it now? It's but just, what if those people got paid to play the video games the entire time? But if you take them away from them, you'd be taking away. Like, hey, you know that's 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 life. Some living. people just want to just yeah. overeat and oh. just keep eating. It's like. Uh, Run. Hey, not all gamers are fat. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> I'm not saying they're all <laughs> Uh Actually, so what do they say? Something interesting I found, I guess, in terms of female male ratio of um, game players. Uh, in the beginning, it is 60 40 percent um, males versus uh, female. But then after the age of 18, it's um, more females than male game players. This is pretty cool. Uh, because sometimes they say, you know, there's not a lot of female gamers out there. But that's there. every but you don't have to be social. Right? It's yeah. just because guys aren't making money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I guess this kind of ties in a little bit into, uh, I don't know, I haven't really read too much Seriously, on it. Seriously, I, like, don't know hardly any girls that can yeah. I don't know if I believe that. There's a lot of girls games on Steam. Right, yeah, I don't, I don't think it necessarily has to be like the fighting one. I mean, there's a lot of side app. Those are games, right? Oh, you, if you're talking about people who play the stupid Facebook games, I don't then, know. Then, then I fucking give up. No, no. <laughs> play the gym, whatever. That's gym a game. Crush, crush game. <laughs> candy Crush. Soccer. Yes, yeah. Candy Crush. Yeah, I'm yeah. here. There's actually a funny... Yeah, fuck it all. There's a funny, uh, you know, that the woman walking in New York City for 10 hours, there's a version of it on uh, Skyrim, of a female character walking in that world. What? And uh, all the NBC <laughs> players, the not, um, I guess, playable characters, are like, uh, t talk to her. It's like, oh, are you here on your journey? Oh, do you need some help? And this dragon trying to talk to this girl. As <laughs> 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 so I can see, uh, I guess that kind of Skyrim harassment or compliments regarding of, uh, the individual. All right. But, well, um, you know, there's, well, that's a, feminine persona you create. The sort right? of women yeah. you get, to, the sort of person you get to decide to be in a video game is very different from what you're stuck with in day-to-day -day life. It reminds me of that other game, uh, movie, Surrogate, with Bruce Willis. You guys remember that? Or, uh, so essentially it's a, a feature city in which everyone has a uh, robot self, a duplicate of yourself. Uh, your uh, sim version of what you think you look like, you know, uh, especially if you're aging in your 50s, you can have a sim version of yourself when you're in your 30s. Young, fresh looking, uh, clean, perfect imagination of what you yourself look like. And that's what you present to the world when you go to work, when you buy groceries, when you interact with other people. Um, because you're at home hooked up to the machine. Right. Yeah. So, like, the husband will be hooked up in this one room with his machine walking around the house. Uh, the wife will be in her own room doing the same thing. So they never really interact with one another. They inter interact with, uh, what do they call it, um, the their avatar. Your surrogate. Yeah, your surrogate. Oh, is the premise that somebody was murdering surrogates? Yes. Yeah, and, okay, uh, I never saw it, but I heard of it. Like, yeah, I remember when that. your surrogate died, you weren't supposed to, but someone had like found a hack and like started actually killing people with their surrogates. And Bruce Willis is like, 
I've got to go figure it out, but I don't have a surrogate anymore, so I'm risking <laughs> my life. Like, oh, it's like you don't have an extra life. Like, yeah, he, yeah. he was like in real life, not a surrogate. And then eventually he gets a, a moment, spoiler, uh, he's, he's able to shut it all down. Of course he is, this is Bruce Willis. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like another, uh, uh, let's move Die Hard, uh, surrogate version. Like, uh, Fifth Element is this Die Hard in space. <laughs> so. Um, and in that regards, I guess you don't really have a lot of the problems with social norms. I guess I guess it's just uh, a weird false sense of self love or um, self uh, like it's more of appreciation for yourself. Um, I don't know. I guess you don't have to deal with a lot of uh, um, self analyzing, self criticism. Um, it's kind of void of that. Um, but I guess in regards to how you feel your People perceive you as when you're walking out outdoors. I have uh, to care in the world for that. Uh, I self identify as an apple. No, you call me good. as such. <laughs> <laughs> you're apple kin? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I'm bringing um, Tumblr back into this. Right? Yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to take Tumblr out of this. Can I, class, can I, can I uh, classify you as a subset of fruit? Is no. That you're no. Apple? Apples are different from fruit, like, <laughs> they're special. Are you a certain kind of apple? Is it very unique? Am I? I'm asking you. Well, I, I, that's really personal to me, That what kind of apple I am. Right. You have to be able to look at me and see what kind of apple look, I am. Look, you, oh you, you can't judge unless you're an apple yourself. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Exactly. So, in fact, that, that was offensive that you even went there. Exactly. So let me pull you out of this argument. In the future, we can label people labelists. Well, I, 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 so this this is this is a weird part of it. I guess I don't really foresee them there ever to be a need of anonymity uh, in a free market society. I think the whole anonymous fortune, all that stuff, goes away because then you'll be embraced in the community that you live in. Uh, that matches your preferences, your opinions, uh, and desires, whatever it is. Uh, there's no need ever to be afraid, to be scared, to be ashamed, uh, because you would not have a legal system with that kind of forced uh, association to judge you in that matter. So no harassment. Um, you know, none of this uh, fear is needed. There's also a level of respect to which everyone knows at what point harassment really is. Well, yeah. Right, I imagine like those uh, nudist well, colonies. They're just not going to um, use it to use it. Like that's, you know? Like I know I'm being rude, but... I want to see you get arrested. Go okay. Right, right. I imagine nudist colonists are kind of like that. A lot of respect, I imagine, or a lot more uh, appreciation and not of the harassment just walking around naked in front of one another. I, 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 what kind of cat call? Right, yeah, no, no cat calls, right? <laughs> I've seen uh, it all. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not really that special. Right. Uh, <laughs> so then they'll be accepted by like minded uh, others. Um, and then you'll just. Not just saying like you're stuck in this one community. Now I'll probably have a timeshare in Halloween Town, uh, you know, from Nightmare Before Christmas. I have a timeshare in Fall City. I'll uh, visit Panzer there in his shack, um, and Nuke Town. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that pretty much w would solve harassment, uh, bullying, uh, just the uh, freedom of, of really having the association and disassociate yourself from those that uh, you feel. Are a bit a little too microaggressive. I think we could beat them at their own game, actually. We're talking political correct. You can use political correctness against them. Yeah. Also, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I was talking about. With, like political typism. correct even that. Yeah, you can actually say because you think in generalities and because you're throwing out these labels, we're actually labeling you as someone who's dramatic. <laughs> so like people know that they, your your accusations of sexism no longer apply. I took that away from you. You're not allowed <laughs> to like argue for that harassment. Anymore because you called wolf. Because you called wolf. Called wolf. Uh, cool. What do you guys think of that? We have a minute and a half, and then we wrap up uh, this episode. Are you like in a song? I know, right? <laughs> well, I was thinking, uh, <laughs> maybe one of our episodes would just uh, run into some accounts like uh, the like substance. <laughs> 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 no, that's just how we should start them. All right, okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. taken. Here, I'll release a smoke bomb. And uh, we'll have to also figure out what our intro song would be and. One of the suggestions would be, I guess, if there's a viewer suggestion, that would be uh, very helpful. Uh, we can do the uh, Golden Girls enter. Not the whole, not the words. Yeah. It's just like a... <laughs> but it's not the same without the words. Oh, no, you could do like... Dun, 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 dun. I'm pretty sure a lot of people might not know what that is. Yeah, well, there's also, a lot of Easter egg songs. So. you got to watch out on YouTube because if you violate their... Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I it think it only works, works if you have, can have a... It, with, it doesn't have any words. If you pick a song yeah. that's over 72 years old. Something like that. But I think it's also really, uh, in terms of, there's lyrics attached to it. Not so much as like little tunes. Yeah. Um, so with that, thank you guys for, for joining us. This. this is a lot of fun. Uh, let's continue to do this. Um, and then we'll uh, have a little special we'll meet up for, I guess on t what, Tuesday then, right? To the second? Yeah, to the second. Um, which which our, photo? Uh, like, oh, okay. You'll find out. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peace. So with that, see you guys at the victory party, and uh, take good care. Liberate RBA. Yeah. <laughs>